I'm Arthel Neville. Time now for Sunday House Call. And I'm Eric Sean. Welcome. Joining us as always, Dr. Mark Siegel, professor of medicine at NYU's Langone Medical Center. He's also the author of The Inner Pulse, Unlocking the Secret Code of Sickness and Health. And Dr. David Samadhi, chairman and professor of urology at Lenox Hill Hospital and chief of robotic surgery. Good to see you both, Dr. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hope you had a nice week. You too. We're going to start this morning with something that's really in the headlines, growing concerns over lead contaminated water. You know, the new report showing the problem far more widespread than that horrible crisis in Flint, Michigan. So, Dr. Siegel, let me start with you. How do you know if you have lead in your water and how bad is this health uh, emergency for our country? You know, it's really a bad emergency and you do know by getting your water tested. And one of the ways you can get your water tested right off the top here is you can call the EPA Safe Drinking Water Hotline, 1-800-426-4791, 1-800-426-4791, and they'll tell you how to get your water tested locally. But Eric, there's a real hats off here to USA Today because they took a story about Flint, Michigan, and they made it a national story by finding out that there's 2,000 drinking water uh, areas which, which are in trouble, and 96 million Americans can be affected by lead in their water. That is huge. Now, why is that? It's because since up until 1986, we didn't have to have the lead out of, our, out of our plumbing lines. If you have a brass faucet, you could have lead solder or a chrome faucet or, or your entire plumbing line or something going from your sewer system to your house. So it's not all about corrosive water like, like we saw in the Flint River. It can be in your drinking water. And, we're really worried about very young children here. That's you the would issue. think this would never, would never have happened. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. They, uh, USA Today talks about six million Americans right now in 50 states have elevated levels of lead in their in their drinking water. They don't even know about. And it. then, what I want to know: if you are drinking this contaminated water, what can you do about it? Well, first, you how are you treated? Uh, you can prevent it, obviously. You can test for it. But Arthel, going back to what we were talking about. Almost 30% of the country are exposed to this lead, and you may not even know it because it has no odor, it has no taste, you wouldn't know the difference. And now we're finding out that a lot of these uh, metallic toxic metals, yeah. whether it's cadmium, whether it's lead, whether it's uh, aluminum, they are in our system we get them from soil and we're getting them from water, and simple symptoms of depression, fatigue, uh, feeling weak, and all of that that we talk about, maybe lack of sleep, could be as a result of these toxic metals. Now, what does this do to your system? When you take a lot of this, and we're talking about if you have 15 par per billion or higher, that's dangerous. In Flint, uh, well, what does that mean when you say 15 so par per billion? Just to I mean, put in perspective, yeah. in, in Michigan, you're seeing somewhere in the range of 4,000, over 5,000 level is toxic, and there are places where they have 13,000. That's a huge amount of lead in the water. What it does to kids, it's a neurotoxic. What it does basically it reduces the oxygen in the brain, lowers the IQ, and causes mental retardation at high level. In pregnant women, it's very dangerous because it can cause miscarriage and stillbirth. And what's more for us, for adults, it can increase the risk of high blood pressure and cardiac disease and kidney disease and on and on. So this is a very serious problem. You can test it. Going back to what you were saying is that you can get a sample of your water, send it to the lab, and they can give you the amount of level. Sometimes it could be fine, but the next mm -hmm. level it could be abnormal. Mark, and, when you talk uh, about those uh, 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 symptoms, I mean, how do you know? You go to the doctor, how do you know it's not something else? So they, uh, do, do, when you have a blood test with your patients, do you actually test lead levels? And is that something that's standard? Well, you know, uh, this story has helped put this on the map for me. I can test this. If I find my patients are irritable or if they're having behavioral issues or anemia or in the case of an adult kid, any problems, I have to put that on the list. And yes, I can test the Can simple you ask for this when you go I, to the doctor? You can ask for this if you go to the doctor. I can test a simple Is lead level. Is it blood or urine? It's blood. And it, you want it to be less than 15 micrograms per deciliter. But the EPA makes the point that any amount of lead is too much. And I want to point out a study that's incredible, which is a Virginia Tech. They looked at infants, Eric, who were drinking formula. And if they had 18 parts per billion in the tap water that was used in the formula, and, Eric, and David was just saying, EPA says 15 parts per billion. If the infants had 18 parts per billion, almost the same thing, 50% of them had developmental delay or had behavioral problems wow. or had irritability. This is a huge epidemic. I think part of the problem is also that on the on side of EPA, there was ne ne never a real standard. If you look at the websites in 2002, 2004, they said 40 per billion is a good level, it's okay. Then they brought it down to 20, now we're down to 15. And there are some studies suggest that even over five uh, per billion uh, is actually a problem. So what's a good level 
Zero. That's what yeah. you really want. And I think that, you know, we're seeing that the houses that are built before 1986, they're used a lot of this plumbing that has lead in them. But guess what? Makeup. Let's talk about like women who use a lot of hairsprays, makeup. We're surrounded by dust, air, soil, and and we'll talk about in the next segment wow. what you can do yeah, to really slow that. They say 75 this. million homes. I mean, the, the about 90 million people Eric, that's are a, that's exposed a tremendous to this. Number of and people. then when we come back, we'll talk about yeah. whatever it is you. I know it's a great point. We want to talk about those filters, like Brita and things like that. Does that work? Can it help prevent yeah. us from consuming yeah. lead?